Living in the city can be stressful. I often find myself longing to get out into the countryside. In fact, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that this is good for your health, above and beyond the effects of the exercise. But what if you can't get out to experience these environments? Can they be brought to you? Professor Bob Stone is working on doing just that, and I'm going to his lab to give it a go. So how can we go for a walk if we're just sat behind our desks? Well, we're very concerned about the number of people who can't go out for walks. People in hospices, care homes, uh, veterans coming back from Afghanistan who find themselves uh, with, with am amputated limbs and so on. So with virtual environments, we're able to use head-mounted displays or large screens and actually expose them to virtual reconstructions of well-known beauty spots, not necessarily in this country, but further abroad as well. And how do you actually build a world? What we've done with, with these worlds, because they're geographically based, is we've actually bought the digital terrain data from a geographical source and aerial photography. So we, we, we combine those two in the games engine, the software that powers this, uh, this, this, this particular environment, and then we use it as a template to populate it with man-made objects, rivers, trees, bushes, flowers, and so on. Uh, so the world that we're going to be showing you today is based on Wembury Bay, which is a lovely piece of coastline just uh, east of Plymouth. Uh, it's got both a um, fantastic coastal environment, it's got some fabulous forestry environments just slightly inland, and it is a perfect place to go and just literally chill out, which is what I did many moons ago when I was doing my A-level revision. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. You're right-handed. Okay, well, what we need to do is to put these devices onto your left hand. This is the galvanic skin response meter, which if we make sure that it goes right down to the bottom of your, the base of your fingers, that will be measuring your skin response. And so we were looking at the conductance and measuring the trend over time. Uh, and this is a, a pulse oximeter, which will be measuring, amongst other things, your heart rate. So if we can put that onto your index finger, and we can start that. Let's make sure the finger's nice and snug in there. And we can start that little thing running. We can get a, we can get a readout of your pulse. Right. Let's see how stressed I really am. First thing we have to do is to raise your arousal level so that we can do some comparisons afterwards as to how good these, these environments are. We're just looking at your mental ability to rotate, in this case, two-dimensional objects. What happens if I get one wrong? Does it give me an electric shock? No. Nothing as ethically awkward as that. That wouldn't be allowed. Great, let's have a look at this world. Okay. So how am I actually going to walk around this world? Well, we're going to give you this little device, which is commercially available. It's called a Z-Key. You move forwards and backwards uh, using the thumbstick. Uh, you look left and right using the thumbstick. And then if you want to look up and down, these little buttons on the front enable you to look down and to, and to look up. So it gives, you, it gives you complete freedom to explore the virtual world. Great. The, the, the sound is designed in such a way that the effects are triggered and the volume is triggered when you approach a particular zone or object. And if I'm one of the participants in your study, what would you actually have me do in this world? We'd ask you to do two things. Number one is we'd ask you to walk around for about 60 seconds, take in the view and then choose where you would like to sit or to stand virtually so that you could actually get the full benefit of the environment. Then what we do is expose you to different times of day. So for example, we can have a nice sunrise at dawn, we can have a nice sunset at dusk, and we can expose you to, to, to various different environments and various different environmental effects. We try to put in borders so that you can't, for example, fall off the end of the virtual world, which is not very, not very restorative. And presumably it's not like a video game where you want people to be able to run miles and miles in seconds. I think at the moment it's, it's, it's probably just a little too fast. We want this to be a restorative, gentle walk mm -hmm. on the countryside. So we need to match the, the sound of the footsteps that you're hearing, which are actually important uh, for creating the illusion that you're immersed in the world, uh, with the speed of movement across the screen. So how does this environment make you feel? It's actually amazingly relaxing. That's often the response we get. I mean, people will sit back and with the sounds in particular, they will sit back and listen and, and get almost soaked in, immersed in the environment. Uh, and we can always check up on how well you really are feeling because uh, my colleague Cheng is monitoring your heart rate and your skin response, your arousal levels in, in real time with the, uh, the laptops that he's got in front of him. Has it actually dropped? Um, he was... Uh... 
eight at the beginning. And it's gone down to something. Okay, eight. right. Yeah, relaxing. It's not going to be easy taking this into a hospital setting. We have a lot of things to consider, things like ethics, things like hygiene. Uh, the chances are we'll probably not be using head-mounted displays but using large screens uh, that we can wheel into patients' beds. But it, it's quite a challenge getting this technology into a sterile setting such as a hospital. And eventually, what's your long-term plan for these kind of systems? Where do you hope they will uh, eventually end up? Well, we're getting a lot of interest from non-military and other and, and medical sectors. Palliative care, end-of-life care, uh, vascular surgeons are interested. Uh, we're even seeing interest, for example, from accident emergency wards. Could this be used to calm violent patients who come into the wards on a Friday or Saturday, for example? We uh, hope to get the technology into uh, hospices and care homes uh, on large screens, possibly even on portable computers like, like iPads or, or Android tablets. So the sky's the limit. Professor Stone and his team are set to test the virtual worlds over the next 12 months. They're hoping to be treating people in hospitals and care homes within the next two years. I thoroughly enjoyed my stress-busting walk on the virtual beach. Maybe we should get one for the office. For Nature Video, I'm Daniel Cressy.